this is our major fall 2022 event. And it's actually an unusual event for the history and the tradition of the Institute. We host an exhibition. It's the second exhibition that we host here at this uh, library, uh, library slash institute. So it was a challenge to set up the works. Um, we are happy to welcome uh, Daniela Thoma, a filmmaker and a photographer from uh, Norway, from the University of Tromsø. And uh, it's a pleasure for, um, for two things. First, because we can uh, host a young artist uh, and her experience from the Arctic, something that she will talk about uh, in a short while. And second, because we try to instigate this uh, contact with Norway and the university sector. So um, we would like to um, initiate this uh, Tromsø channel again. Tromsø has been a partner at the Institute for many, many years. Uh, and we want to keep up this um, very creative contact, starting with uh, young artists and um, other cultural bodies uh, in, uh, in Tromsø. Uh, Daniela, you can uh, say a few words about the initiative. It's, um, this exhibition is a student um, need to express how they felt in a foreign country, and especially a country that we might say it has a uncanny feeling for all of us in, in the South. A feeling that is strange, not familiar, uh, something that excited us. It's, it's a kind of exotic, uh, the Arctic for, for Southerners. So we would like to, uh, to challenge this discussion, uh, also with the audience, uh, after the talk. And we will also uh, screen a short film that Daniela has uh, created uh, on Arctic Utopias. Please let me also thank Christina Sorbina, our steady cultural collaborator from the Norwegian Embassy in Greece and uh, the Embassy for supporting this event. Um, so I'm um, just uh, welcoming you again. Enjoy the evening. And uh, Christina. Uh, thanks goes to you too. Uh, we were exceedingly happy, Daniela, that you contacted us uh, with this beautiful idea of bringing the exhibition to Greece. We have exhibited together with the other colleagues in, in Norway, and now you're bringing your pot to Greece. And for us it's very, very important at the embassy, as well as at the institute, to have our diplomats, our Greek diplomats, representing Norway through the Greek vision, through the Greek way of seeing things. And as uh, uh, Daniel pointed out, it is quite exotic for most Greeks. The Arctic is one thing to go to Oslo, it's one thing to go to the northern part of, uh, of Norway. And still today, regardless of how much information we have, one wants to hear about your experiences. So it's very nice both of we see the beautiful pictures that you've taken uh, through your eyes, uh, but also we are very looking forward to hearing about your experiences there as a young student, as being together with other foreigners there, and also the experience of the project. At the same time, uh, we had the pleasure today to have with us uh, another Greek person who is again a photographer and a film director, Nathalie Vazir, who is sitting just behind here, uh, who also is one of our long, steady uh, friends at the, uh, at the embassy. Uh, Vinikna has traveled many years ago and is still traveling to the northern part of Norway a little more inland than what you have, uh, Daniela, but at the same, on the same latitude, and has focused very much on the Sami, which is another exotic part uh, of the indigenous people of uh, Norway, Sweden, and uh, Finland, uh, and also Russia. Uh, so actually, during, as you're having your exhibition here these days, Vinita is screening her film in Athens these days. It's a documentary called Into the Land of Ice and Fire, and uh, focuses on two generations, uh, the young generation and the older generation of two Sami uh, in the area of Kautokeino, up in the tundra of the Arctic. Um, so by actually listening to you mostly, and but also having a little, we'll be showing a little um, uh, trailer. trailer of the film. So if anybody would like to see that one, it's playing uh, these days in, uh, in Athens. So this way we have two of our, the people that are promoting and profiling through their eyes in all the parts of our country. So thank you so very much. I'm looking very forward to seeing both the Nisimitin film uh, and listening to you. And uh, thank you so, so much for contacting us.
I would like to give uh, an applause to Cristina and Delio because uh, without you two and without our talks for this year, this wouldn't be uh, this wouldn't be happening. So please let's. Go. very much for the introduction to both of you and uh, thank you very much the Norwegian Institute and the Embassy that uh, made this happen. Um, l last year I just contacted and I didn't even expect that after one year I would be here and I would be talking in front of familiar faces, family and other people that just uh, came to see my photos from, from Tromsø so I'm very happy about that. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Tvibit, uh, the Youth Cultural Center, that uh, this project took place uh, and funded uh, the photos and the traveling to here to Athens. And uh, of course, the Tromsø Municipality, uh, that also funded this project. Um, and also thanks everyone that came today. Uh, I'm very happy because this is also my first exhibition ever on my own, so this is something big for me right now. Um, so for you maybe to understand um, more about the project, because this is now only my photos exhibiting here, but how this project started is that I was part of um, a project called My Arctic Multimedia, uh, My Arctic Life Multimedia, uh, which is a project that recruited six people that are not coming from Norway, six uh, foreigners uh, that are young artists and um, it tried to, to taught them how to create an exhibition. Uh, so the first phase was to create a group exhibition in Tromsø and uh, have uh, and when we started this in 2020 so you can imagine that it was a little bit challenging. And uh, the second phase is that we will uh, get to know on how to communicate our part for each one of us uh, to bring our exhibition to international venues. Uh, so MAL um, is a project that tried to establish uh, a further and included dialogue uh, among young creatives um, that live in Norway and, and actually what it means for them to, to live there. And uh, it focused in uh, in two in two, it had uh, two focus um, dialogue points. The first one it was to to focus on identity changes on on what it means for each one of us to live in such a remote place. And uh, the second one it was to talk about the acquired knowledge that uh, connected our experience in living in the Arctic. So what what we learned by living there, what we got out of living in such a remote place, what re reflected in us uh, after being there. Um, so most of us have been there around three, four years there. So, and, and it was also during a period that it was pandemic all over the world. So we were in such a beautiful place, surrounded by nature. And uh, each one of us tried to, to focus on what was closer to our hearts, let's say. Uh, so this uh, first phase was concluded uh, in June of 2021 with a, with a group exhibition, as I said, uh, and uh, we exhibited 60 photos. And after that, each one of us uh, was uh, bringing uh, their personal solo exhibitions in their countries. So here I am uh, with an original institute exhibiting my part, which is uh, with the title Absence, not Presence of Absence, Absence of Presence. Um, and talking a little bit about what you probably seen already, um, my my inspiration was to talk about uh, how I perceive things differently after I moved there. Um, because I came and I lived my whole life before I moved there in Greece, in a very warm place, full of light uh, country. And uh, my stay up there made me think and realize things in a little bit different uh, way. Because I realized that things that we take as granted in some places of, of the world, in other places they might not even exist. And uh, I noticed a lot that um, people there are really 
are taught to to admire the presence of things and to, to cope with the absence of things. And that was really inspiring for me. Not only, of course, in a first level with the presence and the absence of the light and the presence and the absence of the darkness, but also more an internal dialogue about that. Um, so this created some sort of awareness in me and, uh, and a bigger connection with, uh, with nature and my surroundings and a curiosity to understand what is out there because I think I never really noticed things before uh, moving out there. What's happening, how the light changes, how um, the water is different uh, because of each season, you know, these this type of things. Uh, so this awareness of the surroundings, of my existence, interaction with nature, and, and, and this wholeness really made me think that I want to talk more about this. I want to, to tell people that you should go out there and, and see what's happening and, and, and connect with nature and, and see that something is happening and you don't notice it in your daily life probably. But, um, and I think you don't need to move so far away to understand that because it's just next to you. Um, so, in general, when I take photos, I really like to, to write a text after the photo, or I usually write texts or poems, and then I take photos of those. Um, and you will see there is two poems around here that I wrote that come with the photos, but were not necessarily taken uh, during the same period and uh, uh, I would like to share one of them and actually read it out loud uh, so you can you can hear it from me um, it's uh, the one that is just um, behind you here and uh, it was written uh, in uh, the last uh, week of January um, when uh, the first rays of the sun are actually reaching Tromsø and uh, are the first uh, days that the sun comes back to our apartment and you can really feel the peace inside you that okay now we have the light again uh, for the next month and the presence of the light is, is back there. Um, this uh, poem doesn't have a title, I, I usually don't tend to to write the titles, but every time that I read it, I think that it's some sort of uh, ode to some. So here it is. My soul is getting softer, and you make me want to dance around you. Imagine that even the moments I'm absent, I'm still somewhere over there, breathing the same air, the same air that now is getting golden. Are you back or you never left? I missed wondering that. Every time that I see you is like a new sensation, like a hug that you want to last forever. Um, yes. <laughs> And uh, also, uh, as you can see, maybe, or that was my thought when I was taking and putting these photos together, I see different colors in each month. And, and for me, each month in Tromsø has almost its own color. And the look of the sea changes day by day, and the light behind the horizon is almost never the same, even if it's like two days apart. Uh, it's a lot that if you're very curious about, you can notice. And if you have the need to notice, you will notice. Um, and for me, this exhibition is, is intended to be seen, in a way, as an observation of, of natural light, uh, which I normally wouldn't, wouldn't see when I was living here. So, as a reflection of absence, as a reflection of the presence. Thank you very much. And I would also like to see.
say to say a few words uh, for the short movie that we will screen. Um, it's called Arctic Utopias. Uh, it's not. A, it was not produced as part of the My Arctic Life Multimedia exhibition, but it was a personal project that I was uh, working with um, with a Finnish production in the same period with uh, this project. Uh, so it has some parallels on the way I was thinking about it, uh, and I would really like to see how people perceive those two together because this is the first time I present them together. Um, you will follow three stories. Uh, first, they are blended together, it's not one, each one uh, separated. Uh, three stories from Norway, Finland, and uh, their Arctic Russia, Yakutia. Uh, and uh, it's 20 minutes, and uh, I hope you enjoy. I will be around after the screening, so please come to me and ask me and whatever you, your thoughts are. I would be very happy to be here. Uh, and one more note for the movie is that um, the production was uh, completely, and it was very important for us uh, that the production was um, a green production, and we got also an award for that. It was just an ability to work on the Film Festival. Uh, no, none of us traveled throughout the production. We all used the resources of the region that we were based on. And also the post-production only took place in Helsinki, where our editor was. And the first time that we met, it was in Tampere. So everything, all the brainstorming, all the ideas were taking place and yet that was a choice, it was not only because of the pandemic. Um, so yeah, enjoy the screening and see you afterwards. Uh, I'm, I'm used to not saying something after the movie, but rather to, to take questions. If anyone has any questions, I, I don't want to say more, I think that's was my statement through the movie. Uh, so feel free to ask me if you have any comments or anything. If not, don't be shy. <laughs> Come afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for actually sharing quite I think personal feelings with, with us and not just through photography <coughs> and through the, uh, the film but also for the text you read, read to us. Um, I, I, the film, uh, this was something that you, as I said, you didn't know the other people, so you kind of combined quite different, uh, uh, in a way, perspectives. How did, how do you feel to see it together? Not only your part, but seeing it all together. How did that, do you feel it resonates with you? For the okay. Uh, yeah, that's something that uh, people are ask, ask us uh, quite often. Um, so uh, through this. Uh, there is the producers that uh, thought that they want to share stories from the Arctic. Uh, and the thought is that there will be separate stories of people. And uh, these will be different documentaries. Uh, but then uh, me, Svetlana and Martin met and talked more about our perspectives and what we want to make uh, through the movies. And we thought, let's try to see how it would be if we we talk more about wh what we want to explore. Uh, so me, it was more of a personal uh, approach on how I cope with my past memories and what this brought me, how this uh, were brought up uh, during uh, my stay there. Then Mati was quite uh, anx uh, anxious about him bringing his first child in life. And then uh, with Lana, uh, it was more about sharing something that we don't uh, know exactly what it is but because we, we live in the same latitude there is some sort of curiosity around this this region uh, so first the movie was intended to be in three parts like first part my second part Lamatis, uh, third part Lana. but then uh, our um, uh, editor and then the general director of, of the movie Bile decided that he would like to blend it in. And he showed us the first uh, rough cut. And we thought actually that we really liked it, how they blend. Uh, they are very different, I agree, but 
I think we are sharing some sort of very similar anxieties. And uh, we were all very happy when we saw the result, how it came out to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, seeing the different uh, perspectives of all three of you, for me, when I saw it, I had anxiety too. <laughs> But it, but it wasn't like anxiety that, it, it was all like the, you know, the anxiety of fear, but also the anxiety of peace. I don't know I, I, why I'm saying that, the anxiety of peace. Because the way it was combined, I also felt peaceful. Like in some of the segments that you've made and, and the other, I felt peace, you know, in, in what you were showing us. But also I saw, oh boy, this is, you know, very intense place. And so I, I felt a lot of fear of what I was seeing, but I also felt, you know, peaceful and at some points very calm, especially when you were, when there was, uh, you know, the pictures of the coastline and, and uh, some details of, of uh, the, uh, the coast and inside the water and outside the water, I felt, you know, so that combination was really very interesting and must yeah. be uh, the feeling that, that one gets uh, of, uh, Exploring something completely new. It's all, all that combined. What people uh, usually ask is like, why do you call this anxious moving utopia? Is this the utopia? Is this what you're looking and you see as a utopia? And they were like, what is wrong with young people? This is what they see and they say, this is utopia. But because we talked a lot about what it means for us and utopia, and you know, there is nothing that is perfect. But along the way, there is a lot of things that you, you see. And there is always darkness, there is always light. Uh, so the way to the utopia is the utopia. And you need some darkness, you need some, you need some feelings there. And I hope this didn't make you feel too stressed. But I know that, and I hope that it will bring something, some thoughts about what it feels to, to be a human in this world that we live in. Yes, Daniela. First of all, I, I think it's a wonderful idea that you, your editor wanted to intertwine those storytellings. I think the editing was great. It was, and I like the, the differences, not only the similarity, but the differences of each one of the stories. And um, I found that in your story, it was the water element more dominant. And I don't know if it's a coincidence that you raised with this. While in the other two stories, uh, it was more mostly the earth, you know, and uh, this was very prominent. And I also liked the fact that it was not trying to give some philosophical ideas about life, but it was talking about very everyday life, uh, life fears and anxieties of human of humans and also about uh, seeking things so I really enjoyed it very much um, I think it was great that you combined those stories thank you very much first of all thank you so much for sharing with us and I personally loved it I just want to ask you something. How was it received in Norway? I mean, can you tell us a little bit about reception? Uh, what happened after the exhibition and after the, the films that you probably have also shown? Any reactions? Any further development on this project? Uh, is it going somewhere else after the, all of you six show it in the respective countries? Mm -hmm. um, uh, the film has been in festivals this year. It started with a premiere in February uh, in Finland. And it has been in several festivals during the summer. And it was in Northern Norway last week. Uh, I couldn't be there, so I don't know how it was received. Actually, in Norway, I haven't been present when it was shown there. And I only showed it to a conference of the law faculty. Uh, and the people that watched it was mostly philosophers. And it was very interesting how they received it. I was really happy with the Q&A afterwards because yes. people were really reflecting on what I was, what we were exploring. 
and uh, I felt that they understood actually what we were going for which um, at the other festivals sometimes I was feeling that because it really matters that it's shown with other short films before and after so yeah maybe that's not ideal for this particular film I don't know um, but yeah so we've been screened in different festivals uh, also here in Greece actually in uh, Spets it's it was shown but I couldn't be there either uh, but people are always fascinated by the, by the nature and they always kind of complain that they're a bit stressed afterwards it's universal but uh, but at the same time I feel there is I, I hope that there is some hope in film because that was our that was our intention. Um, yeah, and you know, reality has some intention in general. So. Yeah, um, I know that Mati uh, actually has done a follow up on the movie. I haven't watched it yet. We haven't followed up with him, but uh, I know that he has um, discovered more about him becoming a father in these words. So he. he made something. And uh, Svetlana, um, because she lives in Russia, unfortunately she had to move from Russia and she's now in <coughs> Mexico. Uh, and it has been quite hard for her also to show the movie in, in Russia. This, uh, this um, yeah, and the exhibition uh, in June, it was actually very well perceived. Um, because it was one of the first events that was coming in Trump's around that time, so a lot of people came, and there was also the six uh, exhibitions were very different from each other, so it was really nice to see a very similar theme to be explored in so different ways. And uh, I think everyone else has made their solo exhibitions in the country in the summer. Which are you? Um, it's Netherlands, Italy, UK, Spain, and me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they have been also in conferences. Like uh, I know Anna Anna, she was in a climate conference, and and also the person from uh, Italy was in a conference as well with the exhibition. Uh, yeah, actually, all of them still live there. Uh, still exploring, and uh, yeah, I hope that we see more from that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The place, the place where you have taken the three of them was one. No, it's it's me. It's only Norway, Tromsø, northern where? where? Northern Norway in Tromsø. And then uh, Mati lives in a very small place, I don't remember the name, but he says it at some point in, uh, in northern Finland. And Svetlana in uh, Russia, she lives in Japan. So it's in a very far uh, The few, few different places. Different places, yeah. very different places, different countries.